and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be um, looking at a, another album. Um, I wanted to do one which I was um, quite like familiar with um, because like as I said like about you did I haven't got like as much time like to sort of like properly like prepare like these like album reviews so like, I wanted to do one like which I know um, like quite well and like also like I haven't done like um, like done like a review like on this band yet so I thought that I would discuss this album and um, Stone Roses and um, debut album from 1989 so yep I will just do the usual thing in in this video give a bit of background information about the album then I'll show you my vinyl copy and then go over each of the album songs in detail so the Stone Roses had been formed for quite a good while before the release off this album they played that the first gigs in 1984 um, like supporting that like, Pete Townsend like actually um, like they were like very like well received I like, got like a lot of like attention like from like different like record companies like different like producers like wanted like to work with them they'd made um, numerous um, recordings like before um, like before like they actually started work like on this album like I've got like a bootleg and um, like what collects like a lot of like the earlier like recordings and that like they actually like even like recorded like a full album like I think like in 1986 and um, like without like, the title Garage Flower like however and um, like that project that like, was shelved like guys like the band like weren't happy with it which was quite a brave I like, thing to do because um because like they were quite lucky like to be like given that like, the opportunity like to record like an album like in like the first place but like to like throw it away and and like and like say like this like isn't like good enough and um, like we're capable of more like, it was quite a brave thing to do and like in like the end was definitely like the right decision for them their manager also played quite an important role like in like both like the band's like success and like also like their demise like as well and um, like this guy like Gareth Evans like he um, like signs like them up like on like a record label to Silvertone records and um, like they issued like a few more singles like Sally Cinnamon and like Elephant Stone like those songs like had like set like the template like for like the classic like Stone Roses sound and like also like this album. So this was recorded with producer um, John Leckie, who was a established name like, in like the music business. Like he had like previously like worked like with Pink Floyd on like metal, and like um, and like it was recorded at um, Ray Davies's um, Conk Studios like in like London, like where like the Kinks like recorded like most of like their work. So when the album was released in May of 1989, like it wasn't like a big like smash hit like by any means. Like that year, like it would peak at number 32. Where like it did gain like mostly like positive um, reviews, but like over like the next few years, like it would like sustain like its presence like in like the charts like and like become um, like very much like a classic album like off like its era. So yeah, I'll now just show you um, my vinyl copy. This is a reissue. Originals are like quite difficult to come by uh, the artwork um, as with um, pretty much like all of like the Stone Roses single art was designed by guitarist um, like John Squire like very like very like lovely art well like very like original um, like front cover there there's the back of it there just like um, a shot of like the band performing live inside here the um the inner sleeve looks like this here supposed to represent like the like americanization like of like british like sort of culture and that the other side just has band shots on it um which is very cool and the record label looks like this here like two different sides i got it so yeah that is the um so yeah that is the vinyl record looked at Okay, so I'm now going to go over each of the album songs. I will score each track out of 10, and then those scores will be used to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. So it kicks off with um, I Wanna Be Adored, which is a fantastic opening song like for like, the album. It starts with like, this song build up like off sounds, like this quite like um like um like quite like a quiet start on it but like we get like the like iconic bass riff like what comes in and like the drums like I mean like it takes like about like a good like two minutes like for like the actual vocals to start but, like it just builds up like so well lyrically it is quite sparse like there aren't like too 
there isn't too much like in like the way of like lyrics like on this song which is why like it isn't like a 10 out of 10 like personally but like musically it's great like Bran sings it like with like a lot of like swagger and like this is like one of like the earliest like compositions like they had this like lying around um like since 1985 so yeah a great song like great way to kick off the al album like I can't like imagine it like imagine it like opening like any other way song is She Bangs the Drums. Now for this I have got the CD single um, to it here which I will just show. Um, so yeah this is easily one of their very very best songs. Like it's um, just kind of like it's like is is like very pop like driven and um, like great like melody like on it like very like melodic track and like lyrics like all round it is just like a perfect song and um, and like such like an uplifting track as well like it puts you just like in like a um fantastic mood this song here and um, so yeah here is like the cd single to it this was i believe my uncle's um single and um, so it has um like on it yeah you get um two um two fantastic b-sides like plus like a um like it's like a filler song like some which is basically just this it's like um like that's just like one off like the song's backwards but mercy paradise and standing here are both um wonderful wonderful songs they're certainly um like album worthy um tracks right there so yeah um she bangs the drums amazing song an easy 10 out of 10. And the next one is Waterfall, which is um, another classic. It's got a kind of sort of jangly, like 60s, like guitar sound on it. And um, lyrics are like about like a girl, like leaving home. And like, yeah, like, it's just a brilliant song. Like again, like such a classic track, like being like the drumming, like got it, like exceptional stuff, like really. And um, this was um, one of the singles from the album. Although I think it was issued like about like a, um, um, like about two years after like the album came out and like reached number 27 but like it doesn't matter because it is a um, amazing song there waterfall and then that's followed up with a song called don't stop which isn't really a song like it's basically like waterfall and um, backwards like this is something that what like the stone roses like would do like quite often like on b sides of that like just put like on like a backwards recording but like so like overdub like different bits in it this is what we do here and like for me though it is like the low point like on the album yes it is quite psychedelic like it does have like this kind of like rave like feel to it like i mean like this sort of like um like that was like the music like club culture like off like the time but for me i just don't think it is um like all that great to be honest it is unique though and like they do almost get away with it like i kind of like, enjoy it like when like i'm in like the mood for it but it really could do like we're being short of this track like if they just put like a wee like two minute snippet like i think it would have um like um i think it would have been like a bit more like effective personally However, there's no need to worry because um, side two closes, um, side two, side one closes fantastically with Bye Bye Batman. Um, another great song. Like, again, like it goes through like so many different stages, like opens, like quite quiet, like quite soft. Like, whether like the chorus is just a such a sort of like moving, like feel to it, like sort of like the guitar playing. Like, it's just a very sort of fluid song. Like, it really works, um, like, fantastically. Politically, um, I've read that it was um, inspired by the 1968 um, Paris riots, and like that's like also where like the cover comes from. Like the lemons, like are like significant because like it's rumored like the protesters like would use them like to combat like the effects of like tear gas. And um, but yeah, and by that bad man, fantastic song, and um, like yeah, like faultless track. And then side two opens up with a um, little tiny piece called Elizabeth, my dear. Like I'm skeptical, like whether like I should really like properly like score this song because it's less than a minute long. Like it isn't really um, like significant like on the album. Like I'm giving it a seven out of ten. And um, like it's kind of like an anti-monarchy like sort of song. Like I mean, like it is like um, like it's set like to the traditional tune like of like Scarborough Fair. Like and like it is like quite um, like quite spooky 
like a little bit, but like it isn't needed like on the album. Although like I suppose like it is um like it is like a um alright introduction like to side two. Like certainly like works well like coming before like Sugar Spun Sister, but certainly um like it is like one which I can leave off the album personally. And then we get another um, brilliant song, like I think, like just like um, like just like an album track. This one here, like wasn't like a single, like song for my sugar spun sister, but it's just amazing. Like it's got like a kind of like um, birds like influence, like sort of like sounds again, like again, like kind of like sixties, um, like sort of like vibe to it. But like it um, gets like more intense, like as like, the song goes on, like the chorus and that. Like it just sounds like it sounds beautiful this song lyrically really not too sure like what it's about like i mean like the chorus like goes like until the sky turns green and like the grass is blue every member of parliament trips on glue and um, glue which i mean like it isn't like the most sort of like beautiful like lyric ever but i like, certainly like set to like the music like it just sounds like incredible like i think and um, yeah fantastic song there and um, like song for my sugar spunk sister Sometimes I Um, we get um, one of the um, most popular songs from the album, Made of Stone, which I have got the 12 inch single to it here. Um, and so, yeah, this was the first single from the album, but it failed to chart, which was um, pretty bad, I think, because it is an um, incredible, incredible song. Um, like, great lyrics, a very sort of like anthemic feel like, to the chorus on it. Yeah, just an um, incredible song that really like, shows that the Stone Roses are at their best. This has um, the B-side Going Down, which is a, um, another fantastic, fantastic song. So yeah, Made of Stone, um, another easy 10 out of 10 for me. The next one is called Shoot You Down, which is a more kind of chilled out song. Like it isn't, for me personally, like it isn't quite on like the same level as like many of the other album songs. And like, that's why like it's only like a 9 out of 10 for this track here. But it is like, it is like quite like a nice like chilled out song. Like you get some like brilliant like guitar playing like from like John Squire, like Brown's vocals, like a quite like soft and that like quite sort of like different like vocal like delivery to like what like um, two, um, to like what like we're used to like from him and like also like the drumming like as well like I mean like they all like really like contribute um like quite well like to like this track here like again like quite like minimalistic but like it really works like I think shoot you down um so yeah a nine out of ten for me. And then after that um, nice calming song, we get um, quite a powerful one um, called This Is The One, which has, um, a, again, this is a track like, which has a lot of different segments in it. Like you've got like quite a big sort of contrast between like the very sort of quiet, like introduction, like and like verses, which is like, again, like sung like very softly, like by like Ian Brown, um, like before, like kind of like the song like just explodes like in like in the middle. Like it's about um like two minutes in, like where like the drums kick in. It just is um incredible. Like Rennie's drumming like really really shines like on this track I think. And maybe it gets a bit repetitive like towards the end, but like it is like just like such like a like euphoric song. Like it doesn't like really matter for me. And um, like certainly like I think like this is worthy like off like a ten out of ten. And then we finish with um, the absolute classic I Am The Resurrection, um, which is one of like the all-time great like guitar songs like ever, like really. Um, got, it's got quite a unique sort of structure to it, like as well, like from like a kind of like musical like arrangement like point of view. Like it staggers like all the verses, like at like the start, like off like the song, like it doesn't go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, it has just all the verses like at the start. And then like the chorus guitar solo um guitar solo sort of thing. Um so yeah, like it is like a very like unique um uniquely like arranged song, like but it means there's always building up to something, like through like the verses like at the start, like to like the absolutely like euphoric, like again, like chorus, um it just sounds like so epic. And like also like the guitar solo the guy like the end is just like incredible. And um, like John Squire, like what a guitarist, like he melds like so many different styles like in like this solo, like such like a fun like solo like to listen to, like really um 
and like great like to jam along to like as well and um, so yeah like um classic song there like i am the resurrection like doesn't drag at all like i mean like i mean i mean like it's about like eight nine minutes this track but like i can listen to like every second of it like i like, love it so yeah and um, amazing amazing closing song like on the album so overall, this scores um, 93%, which is certainly one of like the highest um, like scored al albums which I have reviewed. And um, it, it, this was a hugely like influential album, like on like most like indie rock and like Britpop, like what came like after it. And um, like it melds like a lot of like different like influences together, like as well. Like not only um, like kind of like 60s like sort of throwback thing. But like also like a lot of like rave like and, and like dance music and like punk like as well like as like progressive like elements as well to make an album which is um quite like accessible like I mean like I, I would imagine that like, whatever sort of like music like you're into like there will be like a song or two like on here like what like you will like really like enjoy like it's very hard like to dislike this album like even though like you might um like you might not like sort of like the arrogance like in places like on it like it's still um like musically um like very like all round like accessible like i would also just like to like address like brown's vocals like a lot of people say like he's not like a great singer and like yeah like he isn't like gonna win like awards for like being like best vocalists and um, vocalist like ever like but like it's not really like about that like it's about like the spirit like what like he puts in um, and like that like, and like that like his voice like suits these songs perfectly and um, like and um, like just like because it does like i think on a personal level like i would say and um, they maybe could have taken off and um, don't stop and um, and like perhaps like elizabeth my dear like maybe put on like a couple like off like the excellent and um, b-sides like which they had um like around at that time because like they would have just made that like, the album stronger, like if like standing here, like all like Mercy Paradise, like had that being like on um, like I've been like on here. Like instead of like don't stop, which it kinda of, like I mean like it does serve a purpose, like but it isn't really um like my personal favourite song like on the album. It is also like a bit of like a shame, like the roses that like, we never um like released like anything like as good like as this like after like they barely released like anything like after this like it was like one more record um which followed about um about five years later like in 1994 like called the second coming which kind of like it was um like they were past it by then like there was like new music like around like which like people like were interested in like the main reason that like, why like they didn't release like new music like as far like as like i can tell like it wasn't because like they like dried up like after like one album like it's because they were like engaged like in like a legal battle to get out like off like their like contract like with silvertone records and like also like the manager like as well like gareth and um, like um gareth evans like he like he don't want to say like he sort of like sabotaged like the band but like he certainly like he failed and um, like them like in like the end like he kind of um like he got them like a bad like record deal like which meant that like they were paying like a huge like huge like sums like to like the record company like not making like very money and um, like not making like very much money like at all and um, like there's a great documentary like on youtube called blood on the turntable which shows like kind of like the legal side like off like the story like and like how sort of like messy it was and um, like it was like after this album that became like a success but for me like at the end of the day like it is all about the music and like the music like on this record like for me like a sub off off like the best like of all time and um, so yeah that's my review off the stone roses and um, 1989 and um, classic debut album so yeah so i hope you have enjoyed and i will see you all next time for the next video goodbye <laughs>